Welcome back, and we are back with Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Season 6, Episode 6, Frenemies. This episode, oh, and by the way, I didn't do an Empire review. I, I filmed it, but it wouldn't upload. I filmed it on my iPhone, and it would not upload for whatever reason. So that's why I didn't do the review of the last episode of Empire. But nonetheless, we started this episode of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta off where we left off last week with Jocelyn and Jessica Dime meeting up at Melissa's bar. Um... Jocelyn had a little bit of attitude with Jessica Dime, in my opinion, and and I guess out of all the girls that Melissa reached out to, Jessica Dime would be the one that I can see actually, you know, trying to make right with Jocelyn, because they were actually really friends. They were real friends, like, before all this love and hip-hop stuff. So Jessica probably is like, and y'all know how I feel about Jessica. I don't like her. I don't necessarily not like her, but I don't like her for this show. I don't think she bring nothing, but now she's about to be friends with Jocelyn. I liked her friendship with Tommy, and now I'm about to like her friendship with Jocelyn. But anyway, yeah, they just talk about, you know, what happened. Jocelyn says the reason why she was acting that way towards um, Jessica is because when Jessica came out to Atlanta, she didn't reach out to Jocelyn. She went immediately after all the people that Jocelyn did not get along with. And I kind of can see that. I kind of agree with Jocelyn. <coughs> Sorry. But I kind of agree with Jocelyn because, yeah, like, if we was friends and you coming out to my city, why are you talking to everybody that I dislike and just telling them, oh, yeah, I know Jocelyn, I know Jocelyn. Why not just come to me? Like, what's up? Like, I kind of agree with Jocelyn there. They, they become friends again. You know, Jocelyn's like, yeah, I thought we were going to be girlfriends. And Jocelyn's like, yeah. Uh, Jocelyn apologized. Don apologized. Jocelyn says, why wouldn't I want to be friends with you? And she's like, yeah, yeah, turn up, turn up, turn up, blah, blah, blah. Jocelyn explains the baby daddy situation with the music video. And uh, Jessica says, I'm not going to say yes because you can flip on me tomorrow. Jocelyn's like, you don't even got to worry about that no more. Just come talk to me. So she is trying to grow or this could be all fake. I mean, Jocelyn, she's known for turning on people. Everybody, literally. And she, uh, so Dom says she'll think about it. Then Dom asks, just asks Jocelyn about the baby, you know, what's going on. Jocelyn says, yeah, I'm not with Stevie, but we having this baby, you know, the normal stuff. Then we see Stevie. I, I think this is the first, y'all know I like to call out the scripted scenes of this season or this show. This is the first scripted scene of this show. So early, Jocelyn, I mean, Stevie is driving in the car with his daughter, Savannah, driving around this, as the daughter said, a white neighborhood. It looked like it would be an old white person's house. Because it was horses all around. It was a big old house, I guess. But they go in. Stevie's lying to him. This is my friend's house. I'm picking something up, blah, blah, blah. My thing is, why she couldn't stay in the car? Then y'all just walking inside of a house. Like, you mean tell me the daughter didn't know? <laughs> and, I mean, not saying Stevie can't afford this house. But Stevie, it seemed like he dropped, he buy a new house every single season of Love and Hip Hop. Don't, don't it seem like that? So, I don't know. Or rent a new house, whatever. But anyway... Um, they walk around, she looking at the pool, they basically go doing a house tour, and she's not catching on or nothing, then they run into his other daughter, and some lady, and basically, Stevie reveals that this is their house, and all of them are gonna be living there, um, uh, Savannah, I think that's her name, Savannah, Savannah's like, who, who's all, and then he says, you know, baby Bonnie might come in, her mom, and they're like, hell no, oh, hell no, I put my foot, I'm like, who is y'all, y'all the kids, this is, like, he the dad, and you 18, just cussing at your daddy like that stuff, but whatever, I don't know, they situation, um, they talk about how, oh, first of all, Stevie, something that I heard was he said his daughter, Sade, or something like that, she taking a year off college, which she don't agree with, I don't agree with that either, taking a year off college, but, you know, teach is on. Anyway, they talk about his son, Dorian, because Stevie says everybody deserves second chances. Y'all should respect any woman that I bring inside this house because I pay the bills. And they say, well, you need to try to fix your relationship with Dorian, if not for him, for the baby, the godchild, cause I, or the grandchild. I know you miss him. He's like, yeah, but he's paying his dues and stuff like that. Um... Sorry if y'all hear that plane, the window open, because it's hot in Michigan today. Anyway, then uh, Stevie says he will meet up with Dorian to try to make things right. Then we go to the next scene, which is Mariah. I call this another scripted scene. Mariah is inside um, the nightclub, 
or oh and by the way the reason why I said that was a scripted scene is because the house tour like they gave him a house he gave his daughter a house tour and then she never got suspicious or anything like that and they just happened to run into his her sister anyway Mariah's scene another scripted scene two in a row um, they had a nightclub. She's talking to some lady. I guess the person that owns it, and she's trying to buy it. She's talking about some. Yeah, I really want this place. I want to um, branch off from my hair salon or the glam shop. I don't know what exactly the glam shop is. Is it nails, hair? What is it? Anyway, she wants to branch off of that, and she wants to make her own nightclub. She says, "I have to talk to my investor," and then Shooter walks in. Coincidentally, script the scene. Anyway. So then, um, Shooter comes in, he's like, why am I here? What, do you, what does this have to do with me? Because she explains everything. She's like, I don't want to work there no more. I'm having problems. She's like, oh, and she says, she reveals that he's giving her $1,000 at a time. So, that's, she revealed how much money. Um, uh, she said, if he don't, then Mariah, then she will tell. He says, all right, forget that secret. Just go ahead and tell. I don't care. Um, she's like, no, you're going to give me $70,000. He's like, first of all, I don't have that money. I like how he was honest about that. But then I'm like, how did he afford to give her $1,000 at a time? What does he do? I don't know what Shooter does. How does he make his money? Um, his wife, I see how she make hers. She owns her own shop and whatever. I forget how she even got the money to own that. But anyway, yeah, so... He says, get along. She's like, no, you going to give it to me, $70,000. He's like, no, they go at it. He balls a paper, throw it, walk out. He's done with her. Script is saying, I feel like something was going on. It's not just an all of a sudden thing. He just decided to forget her like that. And the whole little scene was scripted, whatever. Then we see Jock and Pleasure P. I, or <laughs> Treasure P. I like this scene because of the radio show aspect. Because I like TV and radio, so... Jock was at his radio station, and she was actually interning there. It looked like a legit, like it was a legit scene for the for the beginning. And then we see um, they go off, like I guess it's like a break or something, where it ends, and they go off to another room, and they're together. And basically, she, she starts telling him about, yeah, I met up with Tommy. And he's like, first of all, I never in a million years thought Tommy and the Treasure would meet up. Um, she talks about how she don't like Tommy, and Tommy says she's with you. She's basically all in Jock's business. Jock's like, okay, I don't want you to overstep your boundaries. She's like, well, you know, I'm friends with your baby mama, and I feel like it's my obligation. I'm obligated to tell her that you messing with Carly, you messing with Tommy, you messing with, um, still messing with Cena. And Cena, I feel like it's a little hope. She thinks that y'all have hope to get back together. And I'm like, get out their business. Because a little bit later on in the episode, we see... The Cena not worried about Jock. Cena got a whole nother person she dated. And he do too. So what? Like, that's just his baby mama. And you, he give, he your, he basically your boss. And you just, in his personal life. Like, don't in his personal life. That's just weird to me. I call this a scripted scene though. Because I just, I want to believe that Treasure P, Treasure wouldn't do all this but this could have been a real scene it really could be but then jock at first i liked what jock was saying you know that's my business stay out of it but then he started telling her about the rod situation and kirk rashida rod i'm like huh so i didn't understand that she's like no i know cena cena is not messing with rod that's not your real friend blah 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 whatever i like that radio show aspect of it but then once they branched off i hated that then we see lovely Mimi and Mariah doing Mariah doing lo yoga. Um, they have a little break from that, and Mariah talks about the shooter situation, how she wants to open her own nightclub. She says her investor's plan. Lovely Mimi says, "Who's your investor?" She says, <coughs> "Shooter." And then she basically reveals to Lovely Mimi everything that's been going on. Lovely Mimi is against it. She don't like it because you know she's married. She's like. Does Mariah, does Sierra know? And Mariah's like, no, why would she know? And she's like, oh, you need to end this. You need to stop this because this, that, and the other. Um, you became Mariah to Horaya. She said that right to Mariah's face. And personally, I liked Mariah on the first episode when she got introduced. I thought she was like the cutest girl on the whole, this franchise. But now she just, just personality make you ugly in my opinion and she's becoming one of the ugliest people on this cast 
Um, Sierra, um, see, um, Moriah also says, um, no, Sierra doesn't know, and she better not find out. So basically, telling Mimi, don't say no, don't say no. Then we see Stevie. Is that everything that happened in that? Mm. Oh, Mariah also tells um, Love to Me how it all happened. Basically, they were both drunk. Don't make sense, really. But because she says she was drunk, but I guess he was sloppy drunk. And see, oh, now it makes sense. Because that's Mariah Sierra's assistant. So Mariah told her assistant to take her husband home. That makes sense. It all makes sense now. And that's how it happened because they both were drunk. So I got it. And basically, Mariah wants to tell Sierra. This is all stupid. They would see Stevie, Stevie J, and his son Dorian meet up at playing pool, and they talk about their situation. Nothing really of nothing that enhances this show. It has nothing to do with this show. Basically, they um, they they're back being cool, I guess, and they talk about the son and stuff like that. And just nothing, nothing really important to deal with this show. So. But they meet up and they amend their differences. Then we see Jock meeting up with Cena, his baby mama at her house. Um, I didn't know Jock had twins with Cena. I really didn't. Um, he's meeting with his. He says he was there for two things: his daughters and for this situation. He talks about how Kirk. He basically tells Cena about Kirk and Rashida's situation. Carly Red has really rubbed off on him. But anyway. Um, Cena don't really care. Then Jock tells her about the Rod situation. And Cena's like, yeah, we're kind of dating. Yeah, that's true. And he's like, huh? Data? What? And then she's like, what does that have to do with you? And then they go at it. I kind of like Cena, to be honest, in this scene. Because she's like, what does that have to do with you? He's all mad. He's like, oh, you, you fake. And he fake. And y'all just, y'all fake or something like that. And basically they go at it. Um... Jock gets up to leave, and he says, don't have him around my daughters. She's like, why? What does that have to do with you? Like, I'm just dating somebody. It don't got nothing to do with you. Jock said, at the end of the day, I only came here to see my daughters. No, you didn't. And Cena called him out on that. And that's why I like Cena, because she keep it real. So, like, no, you did not just come to see your daughters. You came to talk about me and my situation, get all in my business, which is true. Basically, Jock leaves upset. He says, have him around my daughters and watch what I do. And I'm not like, young Jock, I'm sorry, but this guy, Rod, is big. And he seemed like he about that life. He wouldn't have been to prison and stuff. Scam artist, he looked like he'd kill you or have you killed, murdered. I'm just, that's just my opinion. Um, and that's the end of that, Stevie. And this is why I don't understand what Treasure was talking about. Cena's not worried about Jock. Cena got... But it kind of don't make sense. Jock had it right there. Because, like, so Cena, you is Rod's third girlfriend? Like, this whole thing. Everybody's attached. Everybody. Like, <laughs> what in the world? Like, okay, so Cena was a, is with Jock and with Rod. Rod was with Mimi. Mimi was with Stevie. Stevie was with Jocelyn. Jocelyn was with Dime. Dime was with... Tommy, Tommy was with, like, it's everywhere. <laughs> um, Stevie is driving in a car, and he's looking at some video. I didn't really understand what it was. And he basically goes to go take the test. Um, and he says that he served Jocelyn with some papers. When she got when he got served, he served her back. And he's kind of hoping that the baby is his. Um, then we go to the meat and potatoes of this whole episode, the ending scene, Jocelyn's video shoot. Everybody that's there. Jocelyn, Mama D. Well, actually, let me just go down the line and talk about what happened first. So Jocelyn is talking to Mama D about Baby Daddy and what it means, what the video shoot is about. By the way, Jocelyn said women's empowerment so many t Not even Jocelyn. Everybody during this, this last scene said women's empowerment so many times. Take a shot every time they say women's empowerment and you'll be drunk. You might just be passed out by the end of this scene. Anyway, they talk about it. Mama D, Mama D, I didn't agree with what she said. She's talking about some, yeah, a child don't even need dad in their life. They need the mom. Nothing is more impactful than a mom. Like, no, that's what you're talking about. And maybe I misheard or whatever. But anyway, lovely Mimi arrives. And lovely Mimi is loud, you know, like she is. So now we got, now right there we got Jocelyn, Mama D, 
which I don't know how Mama D got involved in this. But we got Jocelyn, Baba D, Dawn, who is, you know, it was Jocelyn's assistant. I don't know if she still is now, but they were friends too. By the way, Dawn has always looked so old to me. Like, she is just, should be with Mama D and Rashida's mom. Like, she looked like a grandma to me. But anyway, we got um, Mama D, Jocelyn, Dawn, Melissa, and now it's lovely Mimi who arrives. Um, then we see, by the way, in this scene, well, I'll get to it in a second. Then we see Sierra come in. Sierra comes in and she says, hi. She don't even know them, apparently. She says, I got brought here by Young Dro. And Jocelyn's like, oh, okay, Young Dro and lovely Mimi. Lovely Mimi tells about the whole, their situation. Lovely Mimi and Mariah, or Sierra don't get along. Jocelyn's like, what? Then Jocelyn gets called to go do something else. So then we got lovely Mimi and um, Sierra going at it. And this is what I was about to say. Lovely Mimi, what in the world was going on with her voice, her accent? It was like she was talking in her little accent, then she was talking like, yes, she deserves to know the truth. Like, huh? Like, what? One moment you, how you are, the Cardi B type thing, and the next moment you talking complete English, straight, super, like, all grammar. Like, what's going on? She deserves to know the truth. Oh, no, I don't want to know the truth. She deserves to know the truth. Like, what? I didn't understand that. Of course, they talk about women's empowerment. Women's empowerment. Then she reveals. They kind of apologized first. They apologized. Well, Sierra apologized. She says, I've grown past that. I'm sorry I treated you wrong. But you're gone, so it don't really matter no more. And then, lovely Mimi was the one really being extra. She says, you know, your, your assistant is sleeping with your husband. Um... Uh, Mar Sierra did seem like you know she was legit like hurt by that she's like I think you're lying Jocelyn walks up she's like yeah no basically uh, Sierra says she gotta leave Jocelyn's like why and then all that happened oh and Sierra also said that she was dressed in $15,000 so she didn't feel like doing nothing $15,000 <sighs> I was looking at what she was wearing and well I, don't, I guess I don't really know about girls clothes but she didn't look, or maybe it was the jewelry, mainly. Mm, I guess maybe, not 15000 I think she probably was just close to it and just round it up, you know? Like if somebody buy, buy like $777 worth of stuff, they'll say, oh yeah, I bought $1,000 worth of stuff. You know, they just round up. That's what I think. Um, Jocelyn and Melissa ask Mimi what's going on after uh, Mariah leaves or Sierra leaves and she tells that and Jocelyn's like oh you should have told me I'm like Jocelyn that's not Carly she don't tell everything then Jessica Dime arrives and so now we got Jessica Dime added to it but we lost Sierra so now we got Jessica Dime Jessica Dime says that um no Dawn says why didn't you tell me she was coming and she says, um, I know y'all don't get along, so I didn't really want to say stuff like that. Um, they talk about being fake and this, that, and the other. And basically, Jessica Dime, Jessica, Dawn is old enough to be Jessica Dime's grandma or mom, so I don't know why they fighting. But they made up, and that's all that matters. Um, then we see, they hug, Melissa calls them for a hug, so they all get along. And then we see Jocelyn being, well, first... First, the reason why they got to it is Jocelyn was the voice of reason. She's like, come on, girl, girls. Who was right? Who was wrong? We'll probably never know. But it's over. Let's just... And I'm like, this could be fake Jocelyn. But you know what uh, Tammy said? Being pregnant do change a person. So, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, they hug. And then they actually do the little shoot or the video. And all the girls was in there but Melissa. And it just looked like a weird group. <laughs> You got Mama D and Dawn, and then you got Jocelyn, who's pregnant, and then you got um, lovely Mimi and Jessica. So, two grandmas, two young girls, and a pregnant girl. So, anyway, then we go to a, oh, and they say a women's empowerment so many times. Just go back and watch it, and just count how many times. They had to say it at least ten times. Um, Melissa even said, how does a women's empowerment me turn into this but I gotta say at least Jocelyn not involved first is this lovely Mimi person she always say this lovely Mimi person she never says like lovely Mimi I don't think Melissa like her that much it's pretty funny 
Then we get to the scripted scene. Apparently, uh, uh, Sierra called a 911 text to her husband and to uh, Mariah. They arrived, and basically, he admitted to sleeping with Mariah, and they all go at it. And basically, Mariah was going at it with Shooter mainly, but Shooter was going at it with Mariah mainly. Sierra was going at it for both of them. He, she tried to punch Mariah, but it kind of didn't work out. It was just a big mess. Um, Sierra then said, I'm too player for this. I gotta leave. I'm like, huh? <laughs> it was all weird. And then Shooter says his lovely Mimi fought. So that's it. That's what happened in this episode. It was pretty good. Y'all know how I feel about these new people. I wish some of the old people was in it. I think this episode had all new people except Jocelyn and Stevie. So, yeah. Um, hopefully next week we get more Carly, Stevie, uh, more Jocelyn, some regular Mimi, not lovely Mimi, some Rashida, Kirk, all them. But, <sighs> catch you later.